Welcome back to my Astron Techie YouTube channel. This time, I will be teaching you all about empowerment technologies. But before our lesson, let us have this word from the Bible. Before we proceed to the very first lesson of empowerment technologies, let us put your background knowledge to test. Let us have a pretest. And I want you to type your answers in the comment section. Are you ready? Let us begin. Number 1. What deals with the use of different communication technologies such as mobile phones, telephone, internet, etc. to locate, save, send, and edit information? Number 2. What is also known as flat page or stationary page in the sense that the page is as is and cannot be manipulated by the user? Number 3. Which allows users to categorize and classify or arrange information using freely chosen keywords? Number 4. It's where services are offered on demand rather than on a one-time purchase. In certain cases, time-based pricing is better than file size-based pricing or vice versa. Number 5. It is where the owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. Number 6. It is where content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. Number 7. It is where users will subscribe to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. Number 8. Which allows users to interact with the page. Instead of just reading a page, the user may be able to comment or create a user account. Number 9. What is a diverse information sharing through universal web access? And last question, number 10. It is the synergy of technological advancements to work on a similar goal or task. Let us find out if your answers were correct in the pretest as we go along with our lesson for today. In this video lesson, we will be discussing all about the introduction to ICT in Quarter 3, Lesson 1 of Empowerment Technologies. Let us remember the MELP for today. Our most essential learning competency is to compare and contrast the nuances of varied online platforms sites, and content to best achieve specific class objectives or address situational challenges. Let us begin. Let us first define what ICT is. ICT is the Information and Communication Technology. Information and Communication Technology deals with the use of different communication technologies such as mobile phones, telephone, internet to locate save, send, and edit information. It is a study of computers as data processing tools. It introduces students to the fundamental of using computer systems in an internet environment. How about we go specifically in our country, ICT in the Philippines? Philippines is dubbed as the ICT hub of Asia. Why? Because of huge growth of ICT-related jobs, one of which is BPO or Business Process Outsourcing or call centers. Let us also talk about the primary composition of ICT. First, we have the computer. As we all know, computer is an electronic device for storing and processing data, typically in binary form. The second composition of ICT is Internet. It is the global system of interconnected computer networks that use the Internet Protocol Suite to link billions of devices worldwide. And the last one is World Wide Web. It is an information space where documents and other web resources are identified by URLs interlinked by hypertext 
links and can be accessed via the internet. Now, let's move on to the different kinds or types of web pages. We have three. But first, let us define what is a web page. It is a hypertext document connected to the World Wide Web. To further understand it, let's go in each of the three kinds of web pages. The first one is Web 1.0. Web 1.0 is static or also known as flat page or stationary page in the sense that the page is as is and cannot be manipulated by the user. Let's take for example the picture on the left, which is the web page of Wikipedia. How about Web 2.0? Web 2.0 is the evolution of Web 1.0 by adding dynamic web pages, wherein the user is able to see a website differently than others. Examples include social networking sites, blogs, wikis, video sharing sites, hosted services, and web applications. Web 2.0 allows users to interact with the page. Instead of just reading a page, the user may be able to comment or create a user account. Most websites that we visit today are Web 2.0. Now, I present to you the six features of Web 2.0. With the following features, you would know that the pages or applications that you visit are under Web 2.0. Number one is Foxonomy. Two, rich user experience. Three, long tail. Four, user participation. Five, software as a service. And six, mass participation. Let us go one by one with these features of Web 2.0. Let's begin with Foxonomy. Foxonomy is where an application or a web page allows users to categorize and classify or arrange information using freely chosen keywords. Example of that is tagging or hashtagging. Let's take for example Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. The second feature is rich user experience. When content is dynamic and is responsive to user's input, that is rich user experience. An example would be a website that shows local content. In the case of social networking sites, when logged on, your account is used to modify what you see in their website. One perfect example is YouTube. The third one is long tail. Services are offered on demand rather than on a one-time purchase. This is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spent in the internet or a data plan that charges you for the amount of bandwidth you used. Examples could be Facebook Boost, YouTube Music, Spotify, or Canva. The next feature is user participation. This is where the owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. Others are able to place a content of their own by means of comment, reviews, and evaluation. Examples could be Amazon.com, online stores like Lazada and Shopee, and many more. Next is software as a service. Users will subscribe here to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. Software as a service allows you to rent a software for a minimal fee. Examples are MS Office or Office 365 and even G Suite. Next is mass participation. It is a diverse information sharing through universal web access. Examples are Scribd and SlideShare, wherein the masses can share, can comment on each other's uploaded media or file. And those are the features of Web 2.0. Remember that? Let's move on to Web 3.0. Web 3.0 is also called Semantic Web. It is a movement led by the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C that says the Semantic Web provides a common framework that allows data to be shared and reused across the application, enterprise, and community boundaries. The aim of Web 3.0 is to have machines or servers understand the user's preferences 
to be able to deliver web content specifically targeting the user. For example, our Facebook online coupons or voice search, wherein what you are looking for is given to you exactly as it is in the easiest way. However, there are five problems of Web 3.0. First is compatibility. HTML files and current web browsers could not support Web 3.0. Second one is security. The user security is also in question since the machine is saving his or her preferences. Third is vastness. The World Wide Web already contains billions of web pages. Vagueness. Certain words are imprecise. For example, the words old and small would depend on the user. And last is logic. Since machines use logic, there are certain limitations for a computer to be able to predict what the user is referring to at a given time. Now, I know you are all in on what's trending in our society, especially in social media. Let's talk about the trends in ICT. The first trend in ICT is convergence. Technological convergence is the synergy of technological advancements to work on a similar goal or task. For example, one trend in ICT under convergence is a smart TV. The second one is mobile technologies. The popularity of smartphones and tablets has taken a major rise over the years. This is largely because of the device's capability to do tasks that were originally found in personal computers. The third trend is social media. They are websites, applications, or online channels that enable web users to create, co-create, discuss, modify, and exchange user-generated content. And the last trend is assistive media. It is a non-profit service designed to help people who have visual and reading impairments. A database of audio recordings is used to read to the user. You may visit www.assistivemedia.org for several audio recordings. Let me show you as well the six types of social media. First are social networks. It allows you to connect with other people with the same interests or background. Another type of social media are bookmarking sites. They allow you to store and manage links to various websites and resources. The third social media type is social news allow users to post their own news items or links to other news sources. The fourth one is media sharing. They allow you to upload and share media content like images, music, and video. Fifth is microblogging. These are sites that focus on short updates from the user. And last are blogs and forums. They allow users to post their content and see the following logos at the top to see which social media applications are under the following types. As last part of our lesson for today, we have here the kinds of operating systems or OS in the gadgets that we use. First, we have iOS. These are widely used in Apple devices such as the iPhone and iPod. The second one is Android, an open-source operating system developed by Google. BlackBerry OS. This is used in BlackBerry devices. Windows Phone OS. It is a closed-source and propriety operating system developed by Microsoft as replacement to Windows Mobile. We also have Symbian, the original smartphone OS used by Nokia devices. We also have Web OS originally used for smartphones, now used in smart TVs. And lastly, we have Windows Mobile, a discontinued family of mobile operating systems and was developed by Microsoft for smartphones and pocket PCs. Hooray for today! We're done with our first lesson. Did you learn something? If yes, answer this question in the comment box below. Why is ICT important? State your answer and get the chance to be one in the shoutouts in the next video. I will wait for your answers. That is all for today. Remember to be cautious. Technology is a useful servant but a dangerous master, according to Christian Lou Lange. See you again on our next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and click the notification bell for updates. Bye!